The choices we make every day have the power to shape our future. I made a choice over 15 years ago to live a very healthy lifestyle. Everything that I had researched about physical health, brain health, and emotional health led me to make choices that elevated my resilience, my vitality, my brain power, and even prevented any form of disease. I had become future-proof, and I even created a health tech company to help others achieve similar results. But months after the launch of my startup and during the pandemic period, I was diagnosed with an incurable disease that is often called the suicide disease because the pain is so unbearable. Any movement that I would make that revolved the movement of any of the facial muscles from talking, drinking, eating, laughing, would lead to excruciating pain that was stemming from a facial nerve in my brain. My future-proof image collapsed literally from one day to the next. Today, I'd like to take you on a journey and share with you a new model that can allow you to amplify your joy in some of the toughest life challenges that may emerge. And it is a model that helped me find the silver lining in my situation. But before I share with you this new model, let's explore how we typically deal with challenging situations using the model called the cycle of grief, which comprises five key stages. In stage one, we are facing a shock and basically trying to accept the new reality that has emerged in our life. I was stuck in phase one for some time as I was processing the reality of being sick with a chronic pain condition. Then in phase two, we face guilt, shame, and pain. And since my self-image was built on being healthy, strong, and invincible, you can imagine the pain that I went through in this phase. Then in phase three, we try to regain control as if we're trying to get our old life back. So I started exercising more meditating more, sleeping more, with the hope that it would alleviate the pain. But despite all these efforts, nothing improved my condition. Then the heaviness of this new reality leads us to a state of isolation and depression. I kept my condition secret. My family members and my business partners were aware of the challenges that I was going through, but I did not share my struggles, even with my closest friends. And then after days, weeks, or months of turmoil, we finally come to phase five, whereby we accept the new life that we were given. So in my case, after weeks of self-blame, emotional and physical pain, I came to accept my condition and except basically that I'll have this chronic pain condition for the rest of my life. Please raise your hand if any of you have experienced these five key stages in the last two years as a result of everything that has been happening in this world and in your respective lives. Right, the majority of you. So as the neurologist was trying to find the right dosage of medication to alleviate my pain, he sent me to take an MRI in order to see what was putting pressure on the nerve in my brain. And nothing had prepared me for what came next. This is when I had my second shock and I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And this was the cause of my chronic pain condition. Brain surgery was the only way forward. And as you can imagine, this was daunting. Operating on this area of the body that controls everything from movement to breathing to memory to consciousness is a tremendously risky and delicate operation. And even a very small area of damage to the brain can cause catastrophic disabilities. So I had this invisible scar that no one could see except for my neurologist and my neurosurgeon. 
So I kept asking myself the same questions that maybe you have asked yourself in similar life adversities. What should I do? What is this experience teaching me? And how do I lower my pain? And in that moment, I was inspired by this quote by Viktor Frankl that states, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So I had two choices. One was to go through the cycle of grief once again, or the second option was to explore a new way of dealing with my new situation and reality. I chose option two, and I developed a new model called the Trilogy of Joy that I'm happy to share with you today, which comprises three pillars, love, gratitude, and confidence and three areas that bring out the magic, you, others, and life. This model was inspired by the research I have been doing in neuroscience and psychology over the last couple of decades, and it has shaped the past books and conferences that I give on a regular basis. These three pillars also, based on neuroscience, have the power to reduce our fears, reduce our anxiety and also our insecurities when we feel as if our life is swirling out of control. These three pillars also have the capacity to increase our resilience, our happiness, and protect our immune system. So the Trilogy of Joy became my parachute to keep me safe, sane, and happy during the months that followed the brain tumor diagnostic. The, the parachute metaphor was inspired by my second passion and hobby, aerobatic flying. When I got on the plane, I literally had to put a parachute in the event that any of the G-forces that I would do from the maneuvers in the plane would damage the plane and I would literally have to jump out to save my life. And as you can see, flying aerobatics was tremendously fun for me, but very scary for my family. But flying aerobatics has also allowed me to understand that each choice that we make every day needs to focus on three areas, ourselves, others, and life. And these three elements are almost like the strings in the parachute. Why? Because every single time I got on the plane, I had to be in top mental and physical shape to ensure that I was able to act with speed and agility in case of a problem so that I would not put my own life or someone else's life at risk. Let me share with you how you can apply the Trilogy of Joy model to your life. Let's begin with love. And love yourself. Whenever negative emotions surface, amplify your self-compassion and self-acceptance and stop blaming yourself for everything that happens to you. In my case, as you can imagine, I started blaming myself for having the brain tumor and being too overworked and too overstressed for so many years. But despite the advances in medicine, brain tumors remain a mystery. Second, love others by making their hearts dance with joy. When you act like a victim of your circumstances, you bring turmoil and negativity to your life as well as to those around you. Instead of sprinkling those you love with negative actions or negative words, sprinkle them with hugs and kisses and enjoy those moments as if they were your last. And, sec and finally, bring more life, more love to life by enjoying the synchronicities that unravel the power to experience awe. And think about for a moment how some of the biggest challenges that maybe you have been exposed to in the past could turn out to be some of the greatest opportunities for you. If we now explore the second pillar of the Trilogy of Joy, which is all about gratitude, be grateful towards yourself for doing your best in sunny and rainy days. In my case, 
I can tell you that just moments before I was rolled into the operating room, the neurosurgeon was looking at the final medical test and he turned to me and he said, Andrea, you're the healthiest person I have ever operated on. And in that moment, my heart was filled with so much gratitude for the healthy choices that I had made that in the end allowed me not only to survive the operation, but also to recover faster from it in the months that followed. Then have gratitude towards others by giving them the opportunity to shine. From the neurosurgeon to the medical team, to the inventors of the MRI machine and the devices that kept me alive during and after the operation, I have such reverence and gratitude for these superheroes along with my family and friends that have played an incredible role over the last couple of months for me. And then have gratitude towards life. In my case, I can tell you that I have such gratitude for life, what, given what I have experienced. This, and despite having a brain tumor, I feel so fortunate that the tumor was benign and that it was in an area of the brain that was accessible for operation. Then the third pillar is about confidence. So elevate your self-confidence by believing in the strengths and the decision that you make. When I made the decision to move forward with a brain surgery, I knew the risks that it entailed from facial paralysis to various neurological disorders, but I trusted the choice that I made. And once I was able to trust myself in making the right decision, I was able to trust others and have confidence in their abilities. I was literally putting my life in the hands of the neurosurgeon and his team. And these were the most important nine hours of my life. And I slept throughout all of them. Simply because I wanted to let go of controlling everything all the time. And it was time to empower the medical team to do what they do best. And this confidence in others led to having more confidence in life, in believing that there's immense magic behind the mystery of our existence. And believe that I would come out of the operation almost with a brain upgrade, as I often joke with my kids. Just look at my brain before and after the operation. What I did need, actually, was an upgrade in my hairstyle that looked quite wild after having half of my head shaved from the operation. But in that moment, I decided to let go of wanting to be 100% superhuman, and I became grateful for my new imperfect look that showed that I was 100% human. Let me now share with you more details as to how you can apply the Trilogy of Joy to your life. First, think about a struggle or an adversity or something that has stressed you tremendously over the last 30 days. And as you reflect on that, let's begin bringing more love to yourself. Think about for a moment, if you were to bring more self-love and more self-compassion and kindness to yourself, what would you do and how would that make you feel? Then, if you were to bring more love towards others, what acts of kindness could you move forward with and how would that make them feel? And finally, to bring more love towards life, think for a second about the magic of being able to breathe, to smile, and to continue striving despite any of the challenges you may be facing today. Then, to elevate your gratitude towards yourself, think about how you can grow from the adversity you're currently facing and be grateful for that. Then, be grateful towards others by cherishing the rays of sunshine that some of the people in your life are bringing to your days. And then, be grateful towards life, for appreciating every moment and each embrace. Then let's elevate your self-confidence. And I invite you to think about which superpowers you can use
to navigate your adversity. Then think about for a moment if you were to have greater confidence in others, how could they help you navigate the specific challenges you're now facing? And finally, if you had greater confidence in life, think for a moment, how would you feel if you believed that your future will be better than your past? As you reflect on these questions, I also encourage you to not resist change, but rather to embrace evolution, since everything that happens in our lives is there to help us grow. And in the end, what matters most is if you have lived with joy and brought more joy to others. I've also come to understand that we all live with invisible scars to other people's eyes and that we can enrich our life by the mutual unraveling of our true realities and transform those scars into beauty marks. Suffering in silence is not healthy for your emotional or physical well-being. So I encourage you to let go of the self-images that you may have of yourself and share the struggles you may be facing with those that you know and build those strong connections so you can get the emotional support that you need to deal with your adversity. And embrace new perspectives. Look at everything that happens in your life with great curiosity rather than pessimism. And celebrate your invisible scars as a gifts that life has given you to grow into the most amazing version of yourself. And next time an adversity emerges, embrace it with a smile and use the Trilogy of Joy model as your parachute to bring more bliss to your life and to those around you. Thank you.